Welcome back to Tenaris Adventures. This is Flank06 here doing a video on how to get started with uh, Arena the Contest and Tenaris Adventures. This will be a little bit more focused on specifically Tenaris Adventures since this is newer uh, content and I do have pretty extensive amount of videos already on Arena the Contest. So kind of go check that out. I will say that the learn to play aspect of the games actually are very different. So if you have, uh, you know, Arena the Contest, so, you're, so you need Arena the Contest to play Tenaris Adventures, but you don't need Tenaris Adventures to play Arena the Contest. You can use some of like the heroes and, and aspects uh, uh, or some of the characters from Tenaris Adventures in arena the contest if you'd like um, you would need to reference some of those rules but otherwise um, they are actually back compatible so let's quickly talk about arena the contest and then we'll move on to Tenaris adventures so basically arena the contest is a much simpler dungeon crawler type game it's a little bit lighter there are, it is a slightly different rule set there's a lot of similarities but there's some different rules different components that are used in Arena the Contest uh, than Tenaris Adventures. And basically, if you want to learn to play this game, you can open up the Quick Start Guide and look in the rule book directly and basically just get started playing, you know, right, right from that. So then you'll go to the campaign book and start your campaign in there, just kind of following directly from the beginning of the campaign book. So that is uh, very simply how Arena the Contest works. Um, but for Tenaris Adventures, um, they decided to try to make the learn to play experience a little bit different. Uh, they wanted to go for kind of a Jaws of the line, if, if you've played that before, type of an experience where you slowly are introduced to the rules and learn it as you play. So, and the, and the rule book specifically is a lot closer to a reference style rule book than just kind of a, a, a standard learn to play rule book. So that's, that's much more what Arena the Contest is like, but in Tenaris Adventures, the rule book there, you can go from start to the end of it, but is still very much uh, a kind of like reference style rule book. There is a quick start guide into how to play Tenaris Adventures in there as well. Um, but that's, that's how it begins. So anyway, we are going to go over the components of Tenaris Adventures and how you get started with the game. All right, before we get started here, let's just have a quick look at what my setup is. Um, and of course, you know, you don't have to have a setup this large, but uh, this is what I'm working with here. And we will go over each of these individual uh, items now. Okay, so starting off here, I have my adventure cards here. You will start here with adventure card A. Um, and that will actually be the start of your campaign. So I'll show that here in the books pretty soon. You'll have a stack of cards with numbers on them. These are quest cards. Uh, you don't need all of them at the beginning. You're just going to need a set of them because you're going to get them over time. So unlikely you'll need all of them right at the beginning, but if you can store it, you know, out in an open spot, then you can do it. Uh, also, uh, so adventure cards all start with letters and all quest cards start with numbers. All right, next up here is we have um, the equipment. So there are four different types of equipment. There is ranged weapons, there is melee weapons, there is the light armor, and then there is the heavy armor. You'll see that there's these green ones here at the bottom, which are all part of the starting set. Then there is level one armor here. There also is a level two and a level three armor as well. Um, but I do not have those out yet because we are just starting the campaign. And so it's unlikely you'll need to get those that quickly yet. All right, next up here 
is roll specific cards. You're gonna have eight different kinds of roll cards. So this one here is uh, for the controller class. So each class has a set of cards and at the bottom you will see that there is a certain level. So this is like a level three card for the controllers um, and they have multiple of each each one, there's uh, less of the level threes, um, and then a little bit more of the level twos, and then level ones, there is the most of, and then you should only have uh, two level zero uh, special uh, uh, of the roll cards, just so you know. So I have two stacks of those here. Next up are the city cards. You will uh, learn a little bit more of these as you start the tutorial quest and they will get you uh, set up. But these is like the progression in the city phase and uh, these buildings will all be leveling up. So anyway, these are the city structure cards um, and they have some reference information on the back of them. Next up are hero cards. So in Arena the Contest, you used hero pads. In Teneris Adventures, you use hero cards. These cards will be used uh, in quests and they will be used in the city and world phase. They have the character side on the back, but you'll notice that there is other um, cards that also have this character. Um, and there is uh, one for each character in the game. The more boxes you own, like if you have the character pack, um, villain pack, some of those other ones, those will have additional heroes that you can play. Uh, but Teneris Adventures box will have everything for the legendary box and the core box and Teneris Adventures heroes. Okay, next up is I have two stacks here of comrade cards. Uh, a comrade is essentially a simplified hero, so instead of using many different types of abilities, um, you will just have one card and this uh, character will just do that one ability on their attack. Uh, and so that's, it makes it very simple. So in this example, this is if you had a comrade controller on your team and you were at level two um, with the tavern here, you could get this level two comrade for the controller so anyway we will explain more of that in another video but this is uh, comrade cards and you will have uh, eight different sets of these as well one for each of the different classes all right I have these split up here this is just so you understand that these are uh, NPC cards so like the hero cards they also say character on the back the reason is because these are used in the city and world phase. So um, like those hero cards, which will be used there, these ones are used as well. You'll notice here at the top right, they all say initial and these abilities uh, or these heroes you will get right, or I'm sorry, these NPCs you will get right at the beginning of the game. Um, once you start your first city phase, so you will always start with them. They have very simple abilities and none of them have any quest powers, which we'll talk uh, about another time. But uh, basically they don't provide any benefit to the heroes, um, at least full heroes for uh, the quest part of the game. Uh, next up here is the level one, uh, week one cards. See here at the top left, it says week one. So unlike the previous set that said uh, initial, these have a value here, which you have to purchase during the city phase. And then they will have a quest power and then a city phase power that will be used for the city phase or the quest phase. So when you do get to the city phase, you can purchase these different uh, cards and they will give you special abilities um, or things like um, just gaining a mana cube for quest uh, battles. So we'll talk about that later. Next, I have a tray of miniatures and some of the other uh, plastic token pieces here. Feel free to take out whatever miniatures you want to do. I'd say at least like the starting tray here for Teneris Adventures is a good start. 
Um, and then after that, I have some other terrain pieces and tiles. So the tiles here um, come from Arena the Contest and the Tenaris Adventures box. So like these bigger ones definitely come from Tenaris Adventures and these ones come from Arena the Contest. Um, and then I have, you know, some of the 3D wall type of terrain. This comes in the legendary box. You do not need these to play. You have uh, the tile pieces that can fill in for that. So you don't need that. Then we have uh, some of these little tokens here that will be used uh, for when you play the game, doing some condition type of effects. There is skill tokens here, which you, you'll use on your skill pad, which we will talk about more here. Um, and then there is a snap on bases. This will help distinguish the different type of villain colors and whether they are circle or hexagonal. That way you could have, for example, a villain like this one. This is a villain card. If you have a two villains, one of them is this uh, level one archer and you have a... Um, you have this level three berserker. If you had both of these characters you were fighting at the same time, you could put a hex on this berserker, for example, and then put the circle uh, uh, snap on base for the archer. So uh, looking here at the villain cards, I do have them split into two groups. So this stack here is zero, uh, or I'm sorry, one through 50 and, uh, or 52, I guess. And then here is 53 through basically like a, about a hundred here. Uh, so I have all the villain cards there for whatever quest that we are gonna play. Um, and we'll talk more how villains work and their AI work, but this is um, the villain cards. You'll notice that the uh, side that has a, it will always have a red and orange, or it will always be a blue or a green, and it's alternating sides. So if you are end up looking for a character with one color or the other, you just flip to the other side. I also have some fate cards here and some flasks, which are pretty rarely used, but these come from the Arena the Contest box. Um, so you may use these sometimes in some quests. It's not very often, so you don't have to pull them out, um, at least yet, but I have them right there. Next, we have the campaign log. This will be used to track your status through the campaign and uh, the masteries that you have accomplished, facts that you've gotten, what quests you've done, and you will write in this as you're going. So we have some of the reference sheet here. This one here is one of the new ones for Tenaris Adventures. There is a front and a backside that are different and they do explain some of these condition tokens and the conditions as well as how some of the villains work so that is a good reference there to keep out these are a lot of the tiles and map pieces so you remember how those work and then here is how to read a comrade uh, character so you have a good quick reference here on how to play with comrades all right these are some tokens for tracking your heroes uh, HP, there is a plus side like this and then just the regular symbol on one side. You'll place these on the board to track the HP of a character. All right, and we'll talk about that more later. Next up is the quick start guide. This is a great place to start your campaign right here. Um, just looking through this will give you a lot of things as to you know how to play the game very simply uh, but otherwise you can start by looking at this just to get a quick rundown on a lot of the rules and components uh, similar to what i'm just kind of quickly saying a few things here um, and so this is a great way to start your campaign next up is the rule book i mentioned earlier that this is a reference style rule book what I mean by that is it is divided into different chapters on different sections. So it doesn't necessarily flow for how you should play the game, 
but it may tell you like a certain part of the game. For example, the city phase here is described here on chapter nine, um, and it will describe how to do, you know, the uh, city phase, but this doesn't flow into like how you would play, you know, within the campaign, like, you know, going through a journey phase and then going to a city phase. So it's much more intended to be a reference um, which we will talk more about once we get to a tutorial. All right, next up is the city book. This is actually where you will start the campaign. So I suggest after looking at that quick start guide, just to get a real quick idea of what components there are and what's happening, um, then I would flip to the first page here. And there is a section right here where it says the campaign begins here. And so I suggest that you start there, start reading through here. These blue sections you can skip, but otherwise, right there, it says um, to grab Adventure Card A, and you may read Chapter 11B of the rule book, Adventure Step 1, read and choose one of the adventure cards available. So that just tells you how essentially you are getting adventure cards, and this will begin the journey phase of the game. So you grab this adventure card, and it gives you some instructions here and ex expectations, and then it tells you to read in the rule book, uh, or read in the book, it says, when you're ready, begin this adventure, head to the first adventure chapter of the journal, chapter A, as indicated by the letter on the front part of this adventure card. So we uh, then move from the city book to the journal. This is the journal. This is the very big book here. You flip this open and you'll see that there's some information. There's a table of contents. So the first section, the first half of the book is adventure chapters. The second half of the book is quest chapters. So you will go through an adventure uh, chapter first, and then you will end up going through a quest chapter. So uh, you will learn this as you're going through a tutorial. I'm just trying to give a real quick idea of how the game works. So, like the adventure card told us, we are going to Adventure uh, Chapter A, and then it mentions about reading the uh, rule book. Um, I will tell you that this first section here is kind of a narrative to help you choose what characters you want to play. If you're playing by yourself, um, I mean, you can really just pick any character if you want, really, depending on if you want to go through this or not. It's a fun little story aspect, and, and you're kind of like playing with the mechanics of picking uh, different options and seeing what those are. But really, it will take you to this section here where you are uh, choosing the heroes you would like to start the game with. The only rules is... Uh, so there are eight different classes here. Um, the only rules are you cannot select a team of uh, more than one of the same class. So for example, you can't pick two brute characters to be on your team. Your team has to have four heroes on it. Um, and then uh, otherwise, you basically can pick almost any combination after that there's a recommendation that you pick characters that uh, have different uh, roles within the teams so brutes and shooters are kind of damage dealers we have the healers and commanders which are supporting characters we have the tacticians and controllers that are uh, specialists and they affect like the enemies on the battlefield. And then we have the tanks and the bruisers who kind of absorb damage uh, for the team. Um, th one other note too, is that there is a set of characters that you're technically not allowed to play uh, for certain story reasons. Um, one of those is you cannot pick magenta uh, she is a tactician character. Um, you can't pick any character that is a special class because they won't even have a hero card like we mentioned earlier. Um, and then 
uh, characters that will have inconsistencies within the story is Gazzini, Cordal, Sadura, or the Emperor. Each of those characters will have story issues. You still could play those ones if you would like, uh, but just be uh, aware of that. Also, one other one is the Ninja, which is part of the Penumbral pack. Uh, you have to unlock her with resources. So other than that, you can pick the characters you would like. Um, next up, it finishes through the story and you are meeting through the characters and then it tells you what components here that you're gonna start with. Um, so you will always use a game board. Uh, you will always use the scenario tiles. You will always use D20s. Um, and you will always have chess miniatures and HP tokens. Sometimes you'll use miniatures of different heroes. Of course, the heroes that you're gonna play, uh, you will pretty much always use those ones. Um, and then we'll kind of, we'll get more into some of those characters, but the setup right here of the characters is probably the most important part. This is also shown in the rule book, um, but basically you will have some, the two items you'll start with, a skill pad, an HP tracker, the hero card, the miniature, the attack card, primary attack cards, and then the special attack cards for your character. Okay. And so after this, it says, when you are done, go to the quest guide and open chapter one, Fisherman's Wharf. So once we have finished this section here, we will close this book and then we will move to the quest book going to number one, Fisherman's Wharf. And we, it tells you to read through all of this. I will do a video kind of doing a summary and explaining how to play so you don't have to read all of this um, here in the future. Um, but like I said, is the intent of this tutorial is to slowly reintroduce uh, the con or slowly introduce the concepts to you in the game. So um, as you are going along, you will have restricted abilities and then over time you'll slowly be unlocking more uh, as you start to become a full-fledged character essentially. Um, and that is the intent to slowly slowly do that so that way you're not overwhelmed with too many options uh, and, and what to do from right, right from the beginning. So uh, anyway, and that is the quest guide. So you will follow that and then move on to uh, the rest of it in the journal um, under the section here of Fisherman's Wharf, which is on page 220, and you will finish through the quest there. All right, let's look at the last components, and then that will be it for this video. So I did already kind of mention a lot of the components that are used um, in that last section, but just kind of as a reminder here. So we have those attack cards that were mentioned uh, earlier in the video, right? We all start with starter cards. So each full hero character will get a armor and then one weapon, depending on uh, the role that they're in. We'll discuss those more later. Um, and then we have, you will get two special attacks and they will be specific to your hero. So this character here is Rankier, the Dragon Avenger. And so I will be getting his attack cards and then I will get the two level zero uh, primary attack cards here. And you'll see at the bottom it says level zero. Hey, one thing I wanted to make sure to add in there as well is if you look on page 75 of the Tenaris Adventures rulebook, there's an appendix B here that talks about the attack card replacements for the campaign. Um, so there is a set of heroes here. Usually most of them are from, uh, they're, they're the older heroes, so the some of the arena core heroes and some of the legendary box heroes that had some of their uh, ability cards replaced. And how you tell them apart is you will look at the card and in the top left, you'll see this Tenaris Adventures TA symbol. And that will indicate you use that card specifically for when you play the campaign. So the list that I have here on page 75 shows the heroes that will have 
their cards replaced. So if you play these characters, make sure to replace those abilities. You will have mana cubes for that character. You will have the skill tokens, this skill pad, and it'll be set to the same class that he is part of. Uh, these are essentially just extra. Uh, it comes with the scenario pack. You don't need these, uh, but this is kind of a way to like track, you know, oh, I've already taken my turn. Uh, but otherwise, you do not need that uh, to get started. Uh, and so then you do that same thing for all other four characters. This is what a comrade character looks like. So he has his hero card. He has his, um, his mana cubes. He has his comrade card here. And you'll see, right, this is a level uh, one comrade character here. And this is the abilities he has. Since he is a class that gets a pet, he has a, and the pet is called the companion he will also get a companion card. So that's specific to just this class. Um, it's the only one that will get two cards like this. Otherwise, they will all just have one. And then they will also get uh, two special cards. So there will be the greater impulse card and then the lesser impulse card. And all uh, comrade characters will have those same specials. And then you have the last character over there. And then you set up your map uh, per the quest. This is a completely different one, but that should give you uh, an idea here on the setup and some components. And uh, from there, uh, start going through the tutorial and I will be making more videos on exactly how to play Tenaris Adventures. Thanks for watching.